Welcome. This video was recorded live on World Sake Day, October 1st, 2020. It is a replay of one of the many sake presentations and panels that were live streamed at Sake Day USA, an online sake festival and fundraiser benefiting the American Sake Association, a 501c3 nonprofit organization. The purpose of our nonprofit is to develop approachable and easy to understand sake education materials as well as to provide affordable access to sake tastings and interactive events. If this presentation was of value to you, please consider a tax-deductible donation to the American Sake Association. To donate, please scan the QR code on the screen or visit our website at americansakeassociation.org. Thank you. Enjoy the video and come by. Yes, this is, this is gonna be interesting. Like we, we talked about pairings earlier today and later tonight, we're going to talk about pairing sake with pizza. But this is going to be really intriguing, the idea of pairing Japanese sake with traditional Navajo cuisine. I'm, yeah, it's, I don't, something, it's something I don't know a lot about. So I'm really, really interested. Yeah, definitely going to learn something with this panel. So, hi, guys. You, do you see start. and hear us? <laughs> Hi. Hello, Ito-san. Hello, Sakurai-san. So good to see you. How's the weather in Arizona? It's pretty warm out here, and like it's like a, around 105 during the day, and nighttime Whoa. is all the way to like around like 50. Pretty warm. That sounds extremely warm. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's so good to see you. Um, yeah, thanks would you for like joining. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us for this thank panel. You for us. Yeah. yeah. So, would you like to uh, do a little introduction? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, um, we're, <laughs> I don't know, I thought I'm talking, there it is. <laughs> 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 um, so, all right, so, <laughs> first, timing is everything. Uh, um, Ayaka, um, I'm from Bishop Ramen, and today I will be representing Arizona Sake. And he is the owner um, and the uh, um, brewmaster Toji of Arizona Sake, Atsuo-san. So, hi. Do you want to introduce me yeah, yeah. about yourself? Yeah, my name is Atsuo Sakurai, and I'm a sake guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, um, yeah. Yeah. And then we were just, um, I guess, zooming in from Holbrook, Arizona. So, well, I guess we can start with like a small toast. Yeah. We have the, um, yeah. I don't know if any of you um, seen the Arizona sake um, before, but his um, signature one is a Junmai Ginjo Nama sake, and he uses the 100% car roads from Sun Valley um, rice field. So, well, happy um, World Sake Day, and thank you so much for having us, and toast from Arizona. Come by. Bye. 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 Happy Sake Day. Happy sake Day, yeah. So, Sakurai-san, how long have you had a brewery there in Arizona? Almost uh, five years. Five years, wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, so I mean, I guess I just wanted to share maybe a little about like uh, Holbrook, the town of Holbrook um, itself, because a lot of people, even the um, Arizona native people, they're like, oh, okay, um, where are you headed to? And I was like, oh, we're heading to Holbrook um, for this trip. And then they're like, wait, Holbrook? Is that a name of the town? So it's a very small town. So I just wanted to introduce a little bit about, you know, what kind of town it is. So Holbrook is a basically a city um, in a Navajo County and started as a rail, uh, railroad town uh, back in time. And then the, later on, the Route 66 came through and then they kind of brought in all these people and also uh, businesses. So they were um, start like kind of becoming a, a center, um, like a trade center for the uh, Northern Arizona where like a cattle or the sheep or this like a wool or like a all shipped up um, through the railroad. And now currently they have about a little more than um, 5,000 uh, people that live here. And it's a uh, great, I guess um, they provide great opportunity for people to visit um, not only Navajo, but they have Hopi and Apache um, countries. So it's kind of entrance small city to um, go visit all these countries. And also they have a national pesticide uh, forest. That's um, it's like about like uh, 20 miles away. Yeah. From here, so it's a very beautiful place. Yeah. And yeah. then, so today, so um, his wife, um, Heather, 
she is Navajo um, native, so she taught me uh, how to make fried bread and also a uh, uh, mutton soup. So it's very um, kind of like a very um, home cooked style. So nothing. I mean, she was explaining. Well, it's nothing fancy, but this is what we usually kind of cook at home. And it's a mutton soup because I, as I explained, Holberg was kind of you know started as a you know like exporting wool and sheep. So that's kind of the history, uh, historical background to it. So they openly eat uh, mutton meat. So today's meat is kind of special. Like, um, well, I didn't, I, I was just thinking that maybe it's a bone in um, mutton meat and they just kind of cook it with, um, with uh, other vegetables. But then she brought out uh, all this whole um, front leg of the mutton and said that um, they um, butchered in her um, grandparents' um, house in uh, Navajo country, like, you know, at their home. And they kind of do it just only like once a year or something, yeah. like a special occasion, right? Yeah, so yeah. they um, butchered a whole sheep together, like with the family. And, um, you know, like they were like, kind of explained it to me. Oh, okay. So like we first take out all this like blood and then we, we take that blood to the side to make it into, you know, blood sausage. And, um, you know, the, we, and then we kind of like pull them up to the roof and we skin the sheep. And then the skin sheep, like what we do is we make it into uh, a little rag. So then um, they were kind of explaining to me that, you know, like you have to, and then he has three kids and then the kids were saying like, oh, it's so brutal. And then Heather, she was like, no, this is life. You know, like it's either chicken or beef or fish, like whatever you're eating, you're, you know, eating the life, you're consuming the life. So it's a great lesson. Um, I guess that really, um, they do still do it oftenly in this, um, uh, in the in, in the country, so it was like really cool, and then I get to see all this, all this um front leg to make the soup today. So um, yeah, they don't basically you know they're consuming life, so they put every part of it. They use every aspect of the uh, life to appreciate uh, what we're eating um, in daily life. So that was really cool. Um, yeah, uh, cool thing to see, and also a fried bread. Um, it's also a very um it's kind of simple to make. You use the um, flour, um, baking powder, and a little bit of salt, and you mix with water. And she told me that, oh, you know, like the very uh, important thing about the temperature of the water. So it cannot be too cold when you mix it together with other flours and baking powder. You have to, uh, it has to be like a warm temperature, almost like a shower temperature, like kind of, uh, um, that'll be a perfect temperature to blend it in. So I was like, okay, that's a, a, a cool trick. And then some people to, um, fry the bread. Sometimes they use the lard, but um, I think at, at those on, um, home, they use the vegetarian, um, it's not a lard, but it's like a vegetarian um, oil, right? No, I think no, I saw no, no. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just regular, I know. So yeah. maybe we can just show you, I mean, we already have some of them uh, cooked and it's ready, but I can also show you uh, how to make them. Is it already ready? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we kind of, is it possible to switch around the um, TV? Okay, all right, let's go around. Yeah, absolutely. Can you hear, can, can you hear us now? Are you scared? Okay, perfect. So this is basically a brewery um, inside, and then we can just... <laughs> All right, so we can go outside from here. So it's a really nice, um, bright day today. And I can show you where the, um, you know, the a brewery, I, I can do that little quick uh, walkout after this session. So this is the, um, yeah, the bread is here. This is bread. <laughs> it's kind of hard, Mark. I kind of twist it and make it into round. Yeah. And, yeah, it's into the round okay. and then in here. Oh, okay. yeah. And then Heather told me to poke the highest points of the bread so it doesn't pop 
And also people say it um, by popping them, making a hole, they're releasing all the bad spirits um, into going into food. It's kind of cool. Ooh, you get the golden color. Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> that looks amazing. So Heather also taught me the little uh, trick would be adding a little bit of milk powder so that you get the more golden, crispier color to it if you wanted to make um, more colors uh, nice and golden. Great. And then we have yeah. soup. Soup. Yeah, and then soup. This is the mountain soup. Yeah. This is the mountain and then uh, we have the corn. onion yeah. and the corn, it's called uh, harmony corn. So it's um, kind of soaked in the water um, overnight. And then they can also buy them. Um, it comes in a can as well if it's harder to find it. But yeah, they have the uh, potatoes and onions. All right, so this is the soup. And the bread is also ready. There you go. Nice and fun, please. Yeah. So I guess we can just have a seat here. So let's, let's do the little tasting. So yeah, this is the hominy. It's a soaked in corn. And we have all this uh, matzo meat is all in here. So um, I think, yeah, he told me, mentioned about, he tried to change up the taste a little bit by adding like a... Arigatou <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, let's taste the yeah. soup. Mm. So, it's a little bit like a lighter mm -hmm. in flavor. So, traditionally, when they um, cook the soup, they say that um, the seasoning is just the salt and pepper. Very simple and that very like a classic style. And then they don't make it really too strong of the flavor. They usually make it really light. And then when they serve to like each people, then they um, add more seasonings to it um, based on their, I guess, um, liking. But, uh, and then he also tried out, like, maybe we can just add some soy sauce or, like, miso or, like, maybe try it, like, you know, a little bit of Japanese style to it. But he said, okay, well, I guess at the end, like, it's a simple, simple is the best for this style of soup. Oh. Mm. Okay. You get this a little bit of, yeah, the uh, matcha taste is not... Yeah, it's like really nice and clean. Um, you cook it um, with the bones and sometimes you cook it longer then you get more like a bone flavor like from the marrow. It's really nice and round. Which sake are you pairing now? So this is with the Jinmai Ginjo sake and um, he told me that like the sake, um, I guess the uh, temperature is also important. Like when it's too cold, it's a little bit harder to pair it with the soup. So we make it um, not like room temperature, but it's a little bit, just, just a tad um, colder than the uh, room temperature. So that's the uh, perfect te temperature to um, pair with um, broth. Now, yeah. How do you like it? I like, I like it. <laughs> I love bread? it. Yeah, it's good. It's yeah, good. and then let's try it with Navajo bread. Yeah, I think it's uh, um, when you drink it, when you just eat the broth as it is, you can kind of taste not like gamey, but it's almost like I have that like animal taste to it. But when you uh, drink it, pair it with a sake, it kind of makes it like a lot milder, like to yeah. not as gamey when you drink it with a sake. Yeah, it's, it's good. And his sake is almost tastes like a, a peach or like a lemon kind of taste to it. And then that's kind of really spreads out with the, um, cause uh, with the, the, the soup has a lot of dashi to it. So yeah, it's really good pairing. And then the Navajo bread, um, oh yeah, it's in here. So Heather told me that they usually cut it into smaller pieces or they usually eat it as it is. Um, it's almost ta um, tastes like the, tastes closest to um, funnel cake that like you eat it at that festival. It's almost tastes uh, very close to that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone actually mentioned in the chat that, that he had a craving for funnel cake now when he saw you oh, crying it up. It, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. For sure. And then, okay, hold on one second. Mm -hmm. 
And then he also make, you know, um, use um, a lot of koji um, besides uh, making the, um, uh, making the rice koji, but he made the um, miso koji as well. And then that's like a, almost like a family thing, like a fun thing to do with a family on the weekend. So this is his miso koji. And I think I, I, we were just trying it last night, this miso koji, and then you eat it with the, um, this fried bread. It tastes really, really good. So let's try that. Yeah. Let me see. Okay, come again. Yeah. You have your bread? Okay. Yes. Bye. Which pairing you like? You like the one with the miso? Mm. Well. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's something that you can try make uh, making it. So other fried bread, um, well, I guess people, local people here, there's a lot of big um, influence on Mexican too. So like they uh, make it into the fried bread um, taco. So um, Heather say sometimes, yeah, they make it fried bread and they put a little bit of um, shredded beef and cheese and tomato and top with a little bit of onion to make it into like a Navajo taco. And then also you can eat it with miso koji for dipping. It's basically like a bread. So I mean, we call it Navajo bread, but then the as a Navajo standpoint of view for them, it's just like, well, it's a bread. So I think it's a very like a similar, I guess, idea to like, um, my mom, she was born from Hiroshima and then we call it Hiroshima yaki. They're like, no, that's Okonomiyaki. So it's kind of maybe like similar idea for them. It's just, a, um, this is just their bread. So, but we call it, I mean, so we call it Navajo bread, but I guess the native people, they just call it as this is our fried bread or just bread. So yeah. So last, like, okay, let's take a look of the brewery and probably it's almost time. Five more minutes. Five more minutes, okay. All right, so this is the, um, it looks like. So we have all this, this is the Route 66 all out here. It's really, really nice place. Um, so yesterday we were seeing the sunset from here and when I turn around, on this side, you can see the full moon. So by the way, to get today is the Jugoya. So we're gonna see the nice, very nice, pretty big moon right around here. So this is all the, um, this is the Route 66 right in front of it and the town of Holbrook. And then here is his, um, Kuda is right here. And we have his sign is, so this way you drive down Route 66 and coming up, and then you will find this with nice few little signs. All right, do you have any question from anybody from the chat room? Yeah, there, there was one question. Uh, someone was asking about uh, a tea sake. Is Sakurai-san making a native tea sake as well? Oh, the tea sake. Oh, oh. they were asking about the, uh, some of the people they ask about the tea sake. Oh, tea sake. Oh, yeah. So, um, so that tea sake is almost like a, a treasure hunt. So he infused with some, so it's a, there's, there's a plant called Navajo tea. So he basically um, infused that into a sake. So he cannot really make it for um, a lot of batches. So um, he makes, few, I can show you that a little bit of bottle. But he does um, sell it to some of the shops mm. in Arizona. So like oh. it's almost like a, when you come to Arizona, you it's kind of you go to a small retail shop, and if you find it by luck, so you got lucky. So it's infused with uh, local tea. Yes, it's a, with a Navajo tea. Navajo tea. Wow, that looks fascinating. Yes, it's called Navajo Tea Brewed. So, so that's, something, his, um, mm -hmm. that's something you sell in the local area? Yes, only at the local area that's available. So th this can be, I mean, he doesn't say, because it's such a small quantity um, that he, he can make that uh, he cannot really sell it online or anything. So um, all other, um, you know, Jim Ginjo, like his uh, regular line, he can, uh, people can purchase it from arizonasake.com. But this one will be something like if you come ever come to, Arizona for road trip or some trip, you know, uh, coming to Phoenix. If you go to the local small shops, you might be able to find them. 
Well, I think that gives all of us a reason to get to Arizona. Absolutely. <laughs> Come, Arizona. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Wonderful. Well, we have a few more minutes, so if it's all right, I'd love to ask you a couple more questions. Okay, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. he'll be down. Absolutely. So uh, how many styles of sake are you making right now at Arizona Sake? How many varieties? Um, kind of three styles, like... Um, you know, this is the uh, um, sparkling type, and then regular, and then this tea type. Yeah, this is the three. So that's a sparkling of. in the middle. That's a sparkling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that one is sparkling. called Desert Snow. They have a really cute naming to it. Yeah. Wow. How has how has the reception been in your local area? Because I imagine there's not many people making sake in your region. How has the local people received your sake? Um, probably they don't take my sake either. Um, one of kind of sake, just that they recognize it. This is the Arizona sake, and kind of um, one of liquor. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, I think, I think so. <laughs> so they think it's something, it's just, it's the local alcohol, but they don't connect it really with sake from Japan, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think they're really surprised that they're like, oh, there is a sake brewery in Arizona. I think it's like all the local people, that's their uh, really reaction. And when they drink it, they're like, wow, this, what is this, what is this sake thing? It tastes so good. So they um, started to carrying it a lot at the restaurant as well as like a wine local wine shop so it was uh, really like well received i would say and uh when i go around with um uh, sakurai san in the uh, whole brook a lot of people are like oh atsuo the arizona sake guy so it's really fun like a cute little city and um i think definitely he's getting gaining more and more fan and recognition in the local area for sure so it's really exciting to see that yeah and it looks like there's an award on on one of those sakes too what what's the award that you won there oh the award i think that was the one that um so he um first when he now he has a really nice amazing um you know brewery here but when he started he was really like literally started like in his backyard like in in his garage to start brewing but within a year he opened the brewery he um got the award it's called um it was like a competition in tokyo it's called um it's like a, the best sake um, brew outside of Japan. Right. Um, yeah, award uh, was awarded to Arizona Sake. So it was a um, wow. yeah, great surprise, but it was really, um, yeah, it was like really, yeah, he was really excited. And I think that Arizona, like the mayor and everybody was like, oh, wow, there's like world recognized sake is actually brewed <laughs> here in Holbrook. What is going on? So it was a great news for the local people as well. So it was, yeah, great moment. Yeah. That's fantastic. Wow. Well, this was just such a wonderful, unique place to visit. We love to see outside your brewery and see your home cooked meal. That was amazing. And to yeah. try and to, to see all the different types of sake you're making. We appreciate so much you taking the time to join us today on Sake Day. Yeah, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Yes, yeah, so Ito-san, Sakurai-san, thank, thank you so much. Have a good day. Yeah, Kampai for Sake Day. We'll, we'll, we hope Happy to visit sake you day. soon. We want to see you in Arizona. Bye. <laughs>